Okay. Welcome to the third day of State of the Map. This morning we start with the first uh, conference from uh, Christopher Bedov from uh, Map Pillary. He talks to us to completing the map with the street level imagery. So thanks and it's yours. Good morning. Uh, my name is Christopher. I'm from the USA. I'm here to talk about mapillary and completing the map with street level imagery. Uh, has anyone here participated in a complete the map challenge or helped organize one? A few people, uh, especially some from Milan here is one of the greatest challenges we've done. To tell you about what complete the map is, uh, it's a web application made for tracking image capture campaigns. It's based on a grid system that measures how many images are inside of each grid. It compares it against the road distance in each grid. It provides a leaderboard that helps uh, show who has captured how many images as well as how many kilometers of road. And it also just allows for general measurement of progress, uh, especially toward a set goal. And like many applications in the OpenStreetMap community, this was developed because of uh, certain challenges and needs. So our particular need was to help users with uh, targeted imagery collection. So they had a specific place in the world and a specific uh, number of images or kilometers of road they wanted to cover with imagery. And this helped coordinate it. And also it provided a dashboard for community leaders where they could bring users together in order to see their combined uh, collaborative progress in one area. So Complete the Map first started uh, with a project in Uganda. Uh, we worked with Jeffrey from Uganda. Is Jeffrey here today? Let's see, he's walking around and he's a great commu uh, community coordinator there. And together with the Youth Mappers community in Uganda, over 100,000 images were gathered uh, over the course of about a month. So what happened was we wanted to create some kind of leaderboard to show the progress of each user participating in this campaign. And then we wanted to visualize those results as well as the change over time uh, with images being put on the map. So we threw something together. Uh, it was a first experiment. And the results of this are that everyone could actually see the impact they were having uh, across the country. So many people who had never met before were able to uh, see that they were participating in something bigger than just their local community, but actually nationwide. The second phase of this uh, really started with Ottawa. So Mapillary works together with the Bike Ottawa organization. Uh, they're advocates for safe cycling, for making sure the open street map routing for cycling is correct. And their goal was to capture images across the entire metropolitan area, including Ottawa as well as uh, the city of Gastineau across the river. So we created a, a better version of this application that combined the map and the leaderboard. We implemented the first grid-based system for tracking the progress, uh, red being almost no images and green being uh, images covering almost all roads measured inside of the, the grid. So we open sourced this application and this was really great because we got uh, some poll requests and edits from local users in Ottawa. Uh, particularly Yarrow in Ottawa was very helpful with uh, updating the way that we were measuring with the grids, updating a lot of the style to make it more user friendly, and this really contributed to future development of this application. And as a result uh, from all these images collected, nearly half a million of them, uh, the community was able to have a mapathon, make sure their maps were up to date, and later they worked on a bicycle uh, stress map for the region to know uh, just about bicycle safety and where the best routes were, as well as where traffic from vehicles was uh, crossing with bicycle traffic. <gasps> After this challenge in Ottawa, we knew we had a lot of potential with this application. Uh, it was especially powerful for bringing communities together on one effort. So we had a few other challenges that we needed to solve, and we decided to do a revamp of this. So I was very lucky to have the designers at Mapillary take some time to uh, mock up what they think the application should look like and then be able to take a month to 
start developing a, in a new and improved version. So what we needed was a better way to fetch and display contributor to st statistics. So this resulted in actually a new API that specifically produced leaderboard statistics. This made it a lot easier for us to load the challenges faster when a user loaded the page uh, and made it just more organized to put all that information in one place. So we can look up by one username inside of a date range and a specific bounding box and we can get back a number of images and a number of kilometers. We also made uh, progress e easier to visualize. We simplified our grid system. We split the color coding into five quantiles, so just ranging from a dark red to a bright green, and made a map key that shows approximately what percentage of coverage on the roads this represents. We relied heavily on Mapbox JSGL to use the Mapillary vector tiles, which have uh, all the date and time information inside the, the image tile there. So with this, we were able to use a time slider to make it uh, much easier to actually see the progress of change day by day. And any user can go back to the start and review that at any time. We wanted to also measure exactly how complete each area of the city was. So we had a new API that we came out with for this that measured uh, distance in two ways. We had unique distance. So inside of one grid, we were able to know how many kilometers of imagery were uniquely present. So the first person to map there gets credit for unique distances. But we were also able to measure the total distance. Uh, so any time that someone had mapped the same road, maybe two or three times, we were able to sum that so we'd know over time how many kilometers were also added. So using that unique distance, we were able to divide that by the uh, total road distance in the grid and estimate a percentage. We wanted to also reduce the server load on us. Uh, each time this application was loading, it was making thousands and thousands of API calls. So we created a system to actually run an hourly uh, JSON dump that would fetch all the information needed for each challenge and then make it available in actually a static file. And finally, we wanted to make a method for users to create their own challenges, to set up their own uh, unique grid area, and make sure they could set the map area to their local community without needing uh, extensive input from our, uh, from our team. So this came out into the third phase. Uh, we really tested this in Brasilia, and this one turned out really well. We launched this in November of 2017, we had our new layout, we had better measurement of progress, and we had a lot of uh, local users who were very active in this and also promoted it to other OpenStreetMap users who became involved. So as a result, over 86,000 images were collected over about uh, a month and a half, and 335 kilometers of OpenStreetMap ways now have imagery uh, where there was no imagery before. We also made this compatible with mobile devices. So the same link to the challenge can be open on a mobile device. Uh, we make a more compact layout for that. And using Mapbox, we're able to have the user locate themselves so they can see where they are at this moment and know where they can go to map new roads that haven't been mapped yet, as well as reference existing imagery so they uh, aren't being redundant. So our method for doing it yourself, um, it's based on a small tool that's it's still quite a hack, but it's called the grid generator. And what this does is it takes input data in, uh, in three ways, really. You can load a custom GeoJSON. So for example, uh, you could load in a boundary of your own city. You can also uh, click a center point on the map and set a radius, so let's say 10 kilometers and we'll create a grid around that central radius. Or finally, you can simply click and drag to draw a square on the map. Then you'll also want to input either the cell size, so you may want a two by two kilometer squares, and alternatively, you can just say how many columns you want. So in the image here, you see we have four columns. So it'll take one of the input uh, polygons, and it'll divide that into a grid-based system, then it's going to hit the overpass API, 
And what it's doing here is actually a variation of the OSMNX package by Jeff Boeing. So this is a Python package, and I kind of reverse engineered the way he was gathering information from Overpass API, made it work in JavaScript instead. Uh, it's limited to much smaller areas, usually uh, a city size or smaller, before it would crash. So don't try to run a whole country polygon in here. But then it will actually calculate exactly the distance of roads that are available inside of each grid. So later we can grab the unique distances of mapillary imagery and do a simple division and get a percentage of completeness. We also are able to choose the network type. So we can choose driving network only, but many of these mapping challenges are people who are mapping on foot, people who are mapping on bicycle, or maybe all three on vehicles, bicycles, and foot. Uh, some even on boats. So if we set it to all, then we have a lot more flexibility with how it's measuring, but we can be also very specific if we want only one type of uh, way to be measured. Once that grid's created, it just comes out in a file called grid.geojson, and it's able to be added to the directory of a challenge. Then the user just needs to edit a settings.js file, and here all they need to do is set a start date and an end date of the challenge. This will be used by the Mapillary server when it runs hourly checks on the API. So it'll make sure it's only grabbing inside those time windows. And it already will reference this GeoJSON for uh, a bounding box to make sure that it's not gathering data uh, outside any of those grids. And once that's set up, it just has to be hosted. Uh, Mapillary just needs to know where to look for that settings.js and grid.geojson file, and you have a live challenge. So one of the benefits of this is gathering this amount of imagery is something that we want to bring back to the community. And something else we do is, after running computer vision on all the imagery that's collected, we're able to identify all the traffic signs. So this includes unique signs in the US, in Europe, in Japan, Australia, and many other places in the world. But we rely on the community as well to provide verification for these results. So the users can help improve the algorithms with the mapillary verifier game. Uh, and this typically runs for specific geometries. So by that I mean uh, what you see here in the animation is 70 kilometer per hour speed limit signs inside of only Denmark. And in other cases, a community such as Ottawa can have their traffic signs only for that, uh, that region be verified. And that specifically provides support to their future projects. Once we've verified all these traffic signs, uh, we then have a lot better confidence in the detection's accuracy. And what we can do is then follow on with better precision uh, on the positioning of these signs. So these signs, uh, across several images, the same sign will be merged. We'll know it's the same sign from different angles. And using computer vision again, we'll actually position it precisely on the road. Uh, so this is very reliant on machine learning. So with GIS alone, we found it's very difficult to actually position a sign because the images are on the road, but the signs are off. Uh, but the computer vision algorithm is able to know which part of the image it is and where the pixels lie in a 3D space. And the result is that we have traffic tiles available in OSM ID editor as well as JOSM uh, with signs in their precise positions and a far lower rate of duplicates due to community verification such as this. Going back to the map, uh, what we'd like to see is people using these images in OpenStreetMap. So the ID editor, just this past week, we pushed a new function by one of our engineers, Matthias, where you're able to actually resize the viewer window. Uh, this works for all street level imagery providers uh, on OpenStreetMap ID. And with this, you can get a lot more use out of the images that you're taking. So before it was hard to kind of see that detail in a small area, but now with that resize function, you'll be able to see a larger window as well as go ahead and zoom in on different details you need without squinting too much. Uh, we also have the traffic sign overlay as mentioned. There's uh, over 326 million photos worldwide 
that are available for using, and complete the map tends to grow that by, as you see, several tens of thousands of images uh, each month that it's run. We also have more new features that are planned on the way. Uh, 360 degree image support was just launched in Jossum. And one of the upcoming ones that we're working on is uh, using placement tools inside of our viewer. So this is currently uh, available through Mapillary.js. That's our open source library for image viewing, and it integrates many computer vision concepts, such as matching uh, the pixels in the image to a longitude and latitude. So with this, we hope to make it very easy to edit an open street map by clicking on the image and getting points on the map as a result. Some of the highlights across the world for the challenges we've run. Uh, many of these come from the global challenge we ran this spring. So about one month, and we had uh, several top performers. You can see in the leaderboard. Uh, I think several people from this leaderboard are present at State of the Map. We had a lot of success in Denmark, uh, in Ukraine, Washington, D.C. in the U.S., uh, Madeira off the coast of Portugal, Costa Rica, uh, in the Milan area, and as well as other countries such as Myanmar, Hungary, Spain, Scotland, Canada, Lithuania, and many more. So we've decided to run a third global challenge, and this one will be taking place starting next week. Uh, and if you want to nominate your city, you can tweet to Mapillary with the complete the map hashtag, and we'll follow up with how to make sure you get fully registered. So we have current participants, including communities in Norway, Sweden, Brunei, Costa Rica, Colombia, Uzbekistan, and several more listed here. The top three mappers uh, in this contest will receive a GoPro Hero 5 Black. Uh, so you can see our ambassador who's located in uh, Madeira. He has his GoPro here on the selfie stick, and uh, he won that from the last challenge. There's no setup required for this challenge. You simply have to request your city. We'll ask you for longitude and latitude as a center point. And we make everyone have the same size challenge grids in their community. So we have a roughly equal area that everyone's competing in across the world. So the future of this entire application is really centered around building better maps of the world. So with OpenStreetMap, uh, we are aiming to make the best map of the world. And in Mapillary, we're trying to make one of the best indexes of all data in the world. So we hope we can bridge these two concepts. Uh, you'll see here in an image just uh, examples of our Mapillary detections. And many of these were developing to be instance aware. The idea here is uh, it's simpler with computer vision to know that there are a certain number of pixels in the image that are crosswalks. Let's say it's maybe 15% of the pixels here. It's another concept entirely to know that there are four separate crosswalks in this picture. But challenges like this are the ones that we're tackling to make sure that we can turn this into usable map data. So it goes beyond traffic signs. It goes beyond just classification of images. And really, the long-term goal is to make map data that's usable. And the long-term idea that we're going for is all of this to be available freely for OpenStreetMap. So really, what we want to do is take everything we've done in the past, take everything that exists with mapping today, and do it better. So we want to measure the OSM edits from our imagery uh, in a better and more quantifiable way, so we know the results of Mapillary campaigns, such as Complete the Map. We want to improve the tools available for using street-level imagery to edit the map. We want to have better extraction of data and computer vision algorithms that we can run on this imagery and overall make it so there's better access to the machine learning generated layers that require human verification and validation in order to make better maps and improve OpenStreetMap going forward. So thank you for coming and I'll now take any questions. Thank you uh, to Christopher. Okay, if someone has some question. Hello, what are the other features you plan to detect in the future? So right now we actually detect over 100 features that are not traffic signs. 
Uh, you can see these on our website. I'll bring up an example really quick. But currently we're planning to expand our list um, only in small ways beyond these 100 because our focus is improving our ability to have detailed extractions of existing features. But some of the things we've been working on are commercial logos. For example, in Guatemala, we were helping to find uh, Claro cell phone service logos, uh, Pepsi logos, and these are indicators of where commercial businesses exist. And this is in turn in support of assessing earthquake risk to economic areas in Guatemala. So more commercial logos, we think, will be actually uh, something to focus on in the future. Let's see. And I'll just pull up the object labels here for a, as a reference. Uh, thanks. Hi, I have a question regarding image segmentation. Do you plan to open source it? And if yes, when? Uh, we do have plans to start open sourcing a lot of our computer vision in the future. It's going to be piece by piece. We don't have an exact timeline in place. Uh, but it will depend on which parts we're actively working on and which parts we consider stable. Okay, thank you. Hi, I wondered if you've looked at using video for that rather than single images. Uh, sorry, can you say again? Have, have you looked at using video, like a dash cam video, rather than just single images? Yes, uh, we actually do accept video in the Mapillary uploaders. Uh, especially if you're using our Python tools. So we have an open source library for upload via command line. But we do accept video formats, and we typically break them down frame by frame and make sure they're referenced against a GPX based on timestamp. And then they go on just the same as images do. OK. Other question? Uh, hi, thanks for the uh, great talk. I want to ask, what is the accuracy of the data currently? Like, is it already being used for delivery robots, navigation, or, or is this still kind of far off? Um, say again, the last part, it's being used so for... Is, it, is, it, um, is that data uh, even today being used for delivery robots, navigation, or car navigation, or this kind of, uh, you know, um, applications that need really high resolution data? Uh, it's not being used, I wouldn't say, in production for anything like uh, anything with autonomous driving, but it's being experimented with for this purpose, for sure. The idea is we really have to improve our precision before it's usable for that, although I think it probably can offer some of the best uh, scalable mapping of detail. Okay, we have just time for other two or three questions, if someone have. If not, okay. Yeah, um, in the example you shown of the six, 70 kilometer per hour um, signs, can you uh, make the distinction uh, between the in construction like the white, the white, uh, white sign and the yellow sign, as you, I can see uh, up, it's, it's yellow and it's uh, white on the picture. Can you make this dis distinction? Yes, it's not distinct right now. It's more uh, working on the character recognition there. But it's, it's definitely not a, a big leap to actually recognize the color difference as well. Uh, so the goal is, of course, to differentiate in far more detail in the future. Okay, um, I wanted to ask you about uh, how you use the community to validate your detections. By doing this, you're actually uh, just measure, measuring the precision, right? Is there a way of measuring your recall, or how do you know from all the 70 speed limits how many do you detect? Because this only measures the, like, the precision. So we do some experiments, uh, usually with our, our commercial customers, which tend to be governments. So an example is the state of Vermont in the US. They are a, a customer for viewing their highway imagery. They have a traffic sign data set of existing data from years past. 
So what we are doing is we're comparing uh, what we detect against their existing data set and estimating a recall rate there. So this can really vary by region, by GPS, and by camera quality. Uh, but generally, we tend to match very highly with what they have that's existing, as well as show them where they have signs that don't actually exist, or where they've missed signs, or where there's situations such as vegetation covering the sign. Uh, so it's something we're trying to investigate for a worldwide statistic, but we know that we can average somewhere between um, two meters to five meters uh, variation as far as positioning. And then the percentage recall rate can vary, but we have something around uh, like 82 to 85 percent off of one past data set. Okay, just one one last question, if someone has. Okay, so thank you uh, to Christopher for your presentation. Thank you.